Since we haven't created any parts yet, your initial view will look like this. Click to add a new header. You can either select one of the pre-made header templates from the library or create your own, just like we'll do in this course. So close the library and click the settings cog on the bottom left to enter the header settings. Then name it. Next, add a section with two columns and set the content width to 1350 pixels. Now, as mentioned before, both on the home and about me pages, the header, page content and footer together take up 100% of the viewport's height, so it fits perfectly on the screen. In order to achieve this, we need to control the height of each side part. We'll do this by giving the section a min height, which stands for minimum height, and as it sounds, make sure that the section will at least be a certain height. By default, it's set to 400 pixels. Let's change the unit to VH, which stands for viewport height, and is a unit that's relative to the screen's height, so exactly what we need. Set it to 15 VH. Now go to widgets and drag and drop the site logo widget in the left column. The widget looks grayed out since we haven't set it yet. Let's go add it in site settings, which we can access without leaving the editor. Simply click the top left menu button and in site settings, Go to Site Identity. Here you can change the site name and description. And add the site logo and favicon. Let's set the logo. Click here to choose the image. Then drag and drop your logo to upload it to the library. Then click Insert Media. We'll do the same for the favicon. Once you're done, click Update and close the Site Settings panel. Back in the editor, we can see the logo is updated. Let's align it to the left like so. As you can see, the link is already set to the site URL, which we will soon set as the home page after we create it. Next, in the column settings, set the vertical align to middle. Great. Now let's add our menu. Go to widgets and drag and drop the nav menu widget in the right column. You can see that it doesn't display anything yet. This is because we haven't created a menu and pages. We will start by creating the pages and then add them to the menu. Click Command or Control plus E to open the Finder, which is a search bar that offers easy navigation between different pages and dashboard settings, so you can perform actions on the fly, such as creating new pages, for example. Simply type Add New Page and while holding Command or Control, click to open it in a new tab. Go to the new page and click the gear icon in the bottom left to enter its settings. Then give the page a name. I'll name it Portfolio. Then hit Publish. Do the same to add another page and name it About Me. Now let's go back to the header and in the Nav menu widget, click this link over here to create the menu. It'll open the WordPress Menus page in a new tab. Give the menu a name and click Create Menu. Then add the pages we just created from the panel on the left. Next, click Save Menu and go back to our header. Let's save this as a draft for now and refresh the page. Now we can find our menu in the drop down list. So make sure it's selected and set both pointer and sub menu to none. Okay, it's time to style our menu items. We can do that by giving them custom colors and typography, like you see here. But let's use Elemental's design system features to create some global styles, which will save us a lot of time in the long run. As you most likely know, colors and fonts are the building blocks of a web designer's work and are assigned to elements consistently throughout your site. Elemental's design system feature allows you to create a go-to color palette as well as a collection of font styles, which you can assign to elements globally and all from one place, making editing easier and a lot more fun. So let's go ahead and create the globals we are going to use across our website. You can either click here to manage your global colors directly or go to site settings and choose what to manage under design system. I'll start with the global fonts. We'll come back to set the primary headline when I show you how to add an Adobe Typekit font to your site. For the secondary headline, set the font family to Leto 
size to 60 pixels, weight to 600, and spacing to 1. The body text will set to 18 pixels and give it a line height of 35. The accent text will also be later. Then set the size to 14 pixels, weight to 600, transform to uppercase, and give it a letter spacing of 1. Great! Let's click to go back and set up our global colors. We'll give primary this dark color, and secondary white. Then give text this gray color. And lastly, set accent to this pink red color. Next, click update and close the panel to go back to the editor. Now click the menu widget again, and in style, for typography, select the accent text we just set. Then set the text color to primary. And for hover, we'll leave the accent color. As you can see, it will display once we mouse over the links. Next, select the active color that will be displayed for the active pages. Set it to accent as well. Lastly, set the horizontal padding to 40 to space them a bit. When it comes to contact information, you want it bold, visible, and standing out on your website so people can get in touch with you easily. We are going to create a contact button that will be displayed right next to the menu and set it to open a pop-up with your contact form. So drag in a button widget and drop it under the menu. Add the button text over here. I'll type contact. And in the style tab, let's style it a bit. As you can see, it already comes with some default styling, such as the global accent text for typography and the global accent color for the background, which we set up earlier. Let's change this to primary and set the text color to secondary. Next, we'll set the border radius to zero, so it's a rectangle, and unlink the padding so we can set them individually. I'll set it to 20 pixels on the top and bottom, and 45 pixels on both sides. Great. Now, let's position the button next to the menu. All we need to do is make a quick change in the Advanced tab. So, for the button widget, go to Advanced, and in Positioning, set it to Inline. Then, back in the Nav menu widget, do the same. Cool! This setting allows you to align elements side by side, in the same column. As you can see, both the button and the nav menu widgets don't take up 100% of the column's width anymore, just the width of the widget itself, as indicated by the blue line, creating space for more objects to be positioned next to each other. Now click the right column to enter its settings. Set the vertical align to middle, and horizontal align to end. Great, we are done with the header. Let's click Publish and set the conditions that determine where this header template is displayed across the website. By default, it's set to display across the entire site, exactly what we need. So hit Save and Close. Just like the header, we will need a footer on every page across the site. So let's go back to the Theme Builder by clicking the hamburger menu on the top left, and this time choose to add a new footer. You can select one of our pro footer templates from the library, but since we are creating one from scratch, let's close this and make a start. Name it first, and then add a section with two columns, and set the content width to 1350 pixels, the same we set for the header, so they are aligned. Next, add a min height of 10VH, so the header and footer take up 25VH together, leaving 75VH for the pages. We'll get to that later. We will display the website's credits in the left column and the social icons in the right one. So go to Widgets, search for and drag the icon list widget into the left column. Delete two items from the list and add the copyright icon like so. Next, type your website link next to it. In my case, it will be nickdavies.com. In the Style tab, select the primary global color for the icon and set the size to 15. Do the same for the text color, and for typography, set it to accent text. Now search for and drag the social icons in the right one. Add your personal links to each one, and click the gear icon to display the link options. For example, select this one to make sure the link is opened in a new tab. Here, you can change the shape of the icons. 
we will select the circle. And lastly, align it to the right. OK, time to style them. In the Style tab, set the color to Custom. And for the primary color, we'll open the color picker and drag the opacity all the way down so it's transparent. This way, we'll only see the social media icons, no matter the section's background color. Next, set the secondary color to primary, size to 18, and spacing to 0. In the hover option for primary color, open the color picker and drag the opacity all the way down so it's transparent as well. Then set the secondary color to accent. Great, we're done with the footer. Click Publish and set it to display across the entire site as well. Then hit Save and Close. Lastly, click on the hamburger menu and choose Exit to Dashboard. Next up, we'll get familiar with the Elementor interface, so keep watching.